Hey there folks, welcome to the stream. Today I have a exciting TRS-80 game called Android Nim. Let me start loading it up and then I will talk about it. Let's get it loaded first. Uh, I think it was just a basic program if I'm not mistaken. So there we go, start loading the program. So basically um, Nim is a uh, pretty, um, I guess, famous old game which you'll see what it is if you haven't seen it before, but it's it's like sort of a game where, I mean, it's a little bit of a math game, but you have to basically decide to take things away from piles, and whoever takes the last thing off the pile loses or wins, depending on how you look at it. Um, the, the cool thing about this game, so this game, Android Nim, I think it was the first game written by Leo Christofferson, and it's not even credited on the package. It was distributed by um, 80 US Magazine, this is 80 US Software, and... Um, Basically, uh, is my video like fuzzing out or something? I'm getting a weird error, but it seems like it's it should be working. Um, what he was known for was basically doing really cool things with the graphics and the sound of the TRS-80. So, a game which like will be like just stupid garbage, basically, if without without the way he, the presentation becomes like a fun game when it's presented in the right way. And that's what I think you folks who are watching this are going to see on this stream. Um, in addition to this, I'm also going to try this this out, which is the uh, November 1978 issue of Sea Load Magazine. We've been doing Sea Load Magazines on our on this stream. There's a lot of cool games and stuff on here. So this is the no November 1978 issue. Uh, but first, we're going to try uh, Android Nim at least once and see how that is. Uh, if you're in the chat, let me know if uh, you're having any technical difficulties. Again, I'm having uh, I'm seeing some I don't know weird error about YouTube is not receiving a video, but I think it's just. Uh, a matter of, uh, it, it's, a, it's not really, nothing's happening right now except for loading a tape. Hey Ryan, how's it going? How you doing, man? Good to see you. Uh, hopefully this, uh, this will be done relatively soon. But yeah, Android Nim by Leo Christopherson. And you can already see in the, in the tape itself, there's a picture of like those androids. They become like the mascot basically for all his games. The most famous thing that he did is the Dancing Demon. That was picked up by Radio Shack. And if you ever have a tier, if you ever had a tier say back in the day, I'm pretty sure you play the Dancing Demon, and I will I will stream that at one point too. That's not really a game; it's more like a, an interactive presentation or something like that. But it's also pretty cool. This is a game; it's a pretty simple game, but again, with with cool animation and cool graphics. So I I, I promise you, you will you will like it. Um, yeah, I miss Radio Shack too, Ryan. I agree. But I promise you'll like this game, even though it's not very deep. And then I've not actually tried the games on the C-Load um, tape this time. I, I loaded them up, make sure they all work. I've not tried any of them, so we'll try those together and we'll see uh, if they're any good. I bet you, I mean, there's a couple of hidden gems in there somewhere. Gamers Grotto, Jeremy, how you doing? This looks like it'll be intriguing. <laughs> I think it's going to be cool. I, I I tried it, like, I, you know, knowing, like, Nim is a very basic game, I was like, how good could this be? But... It's a very cool presentation, I will say that. So you, I think you're gonna like it. I don't know. If, I don't think they gave this away with with the, with the magazine. I think it was like everybody who got the magazine, you know, had a chance to order it. Um, anyway, the tape should be. I mean, it's amazing, actually, if you think about it. It's just a simple, basic game like Nim. If you've ever played that game, you could probably write it on like you know, 50 lines of basic code or something, and you'd think like it would take up like you know, a tiny amount of a tape. The fact that it's still loading, you can get an idea of like it's all graphics and animation and sound that it's actually going to be in this thing. So everybody's super excited. The suspense is killing you, right? Drum roll, please. <laughs> no, it'll, it's going to be cool. As soon as it's done, which should be momentarily. Gamers Grotto, Ryan, how are you guys doing this evening? How's everything chilling in your part of the woods? Up in uh, Canada and in uh, New Mexico. Here we go. Ready. All right. Ready, you guys? All ready? Everyone's ready? I can actually type in the right window here. Everybody excited here? How is batch party to load? All right. So Android Nim. When you see a star on the left of Android Nim, it's your turn. Press the number one, two, three in the row you to remove Androids from. If you press change your mind, press the spacer bar. It doesn't even call it the space bar. It's the spacer bar. And it erases... If you want to give up, press R. You can remove as many androids as you wish from any row, and it is your turn. To your win, you must remove the last android. A test signal is now being output of the cable with the recorder's aux input. So basically, 
it's it's doing this to let you see that it's it's making sounds, and it's about to make sure that you can actually hear the sound of your TRS-80. And if you can't hear it, you, this is your opportunity to fix it. And if you can hear it, then you can go ahead and start. So here's my androids. First move by you or by me? I guess by me. So I'll press one. See, see all these androids are talking and looking around. Very well, well, you may start. I think that's so okay. The way this game works is aside from the fact they're all talking and looking at each other, the idea is to be the last person to take any of these androids off the board. The ones on the left don't count, that the left row there, those are like the they were badges, it says those are the cops or something. The ones on the right are the ones you have to eliminate. And yeah, it's my turn, I get it. It's my turn. By the way, the sound by itself was a pretty like awesome thing for TRS-80, like it, it wasn't trivial to make sound on the TRS-80, or graphics for that matter um, so the idea is you can take from any row as many as you want on your turn, and then the idea is to you get the last one so if you're like um, if you're like a, a math person this is like super easy, you can figure it out and be done with it, I'm unfortunately not a math person, so I'm going to blow it somehow, like I'm sure but uh, let's I'll just show how it works, so say I pick row 3 and then I can say, kill as many of them as I want. So I'll say all three of them. So I picked three. So now this, the cop on the bottom looks at me, and he's like, yup, I got it. Oh, I have to hit enter. He, he nods at me, okay. Now he, that means he got it. And now he's going to kill them. <laughs> it's like Star Trek style. Ryan says, too, you're definitely a math person. Come on. I mean, you're right. I could I could figure this out, but I just haven't... I, 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 in high school, I could have done this and, and without a problem, but I haven't played in a long time. So the computer is probably going to take advantage of me. Now the computer is thinking what to do. 1-1. One, one. I sort of figured it was going to do that. I might actually win. I think I know a strategy to win now. Which one is the tank commander data? Find him, he's late for duty. Tank commander data is, I think, one of the guys on the left. Alright, I'm gonna now do the same thing 1 1. 1 1. What else are you guys saying? Uh, Jeremy is old Canada. <laughs> That's sort of funny. I was around in Canada when Prime Minister was not even human. He actually, actually, I was playing Trill Pursuit today, and uh, the question was. Which Prime Minister of Canada was told he'd be the Prime Minister of Canada when he was four years old? And it was, of course, uh, Mr. Justin Trudeau. All right, his turn. 3-2, he says. 2-3, rather. Row 2, and he's taking 3 away. I think I'm going to win this game, because I think I, I think I got lucky somehow. Well, I'll kill him. All right, now we'll do this, I'm gonna do the same thing. Take away three people from the first row. Uh, one, three. I know all kinds of video games. I know all kinds of programming. I'm a mob accountant. <laughs> I'm not a mob accountant. Trust me. And he retracted the message. <laughs> I'm not a mob accountant, you idiot. You don't have to retract that. It's not. It's not true. You retract it, you make it seem like it's true or something. Alright, this is looking good. Looking good for me. Come on, computer, what are you going to do now? I got into a situation where I don't think I can lose. These androids just willingly go to their death, it looks like. What do you guys think of the presentation here? Like, the game is very simple, but isn't the graphics cool? Isn't the sound effects cool? They're all, like, chattering away. If you had the... This came out in 1978. If you had a TRC in 1978, I guarantee you would have been impressed by this. Unfortunately, it's not 1978. It's now 2021, so I, I can't help that, but... And that's like a phaser or like a Klingon disruptor beam. All right, my turn. Ding, 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 ding. Let's take two, one. Jeremy says, I like it, and Ryan says, I like the graphics and the animations. You don't like the sounds? It's too annoying. 
I mean, listen, they never sound blaster card. This is the, the best they could do. This, I think the phaser, the phaser sound is cool. Bloop. I think I'm gonna win. Like I can't, I cannot lose at this point. Whichever one he takes, I'll take the other one, and then I should win. The reactions, are, hey Blake, how you doing? I agree. The reactions and expressions are great. Nobody likes the sound except for me. That's what I'll be. That's what I, the vibe I'm getting here. I like they just like go to their death. It's like the guy just stares there and be killed. Gamers Gross, I like it all. It's classic, unique, and interesting. I agree. I I, don't, I wonder if there's anybody who's ever streamed this game, either on YouTube or on Twitch. All right, my turn. Well, I mean, I, obviously, I know what my turn is going to be. Two, one. My first cell phone game sounded like that, Ryan says. That's funny. So what happens if you win? That's the question. Do I get like a cool animation now? Through some rude, barbaric, <laughs> cheap, <laughs> acidine, <laughs> grotesque. The computer is like trash talking here. Disastrous, nonsensical, stroke of fate. You win! <laughs> that was okay. Do I get like a dance or something? They're all looking down. They close their eyes. They all close their eyes. Uh, open their eyes. What are they looking at? Do you give him yes or no? Alright. I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed in that ending. I, I felt like there would be some cool editing or something like that. Alright, let's turn this off. Let's try something else. And we'll come back to this afterwards maybe one more time. But let's try the sea load stuff because usually that's really good. Why do androids blink? Because they have they're trying to be look like humans, of course. Why else would they blink? All right, let's load the next thing here. I'll just reboot it just in case. This one should be quicker. So that's TRC eighty for you. I wonder how much that cost. I think it was like twenty bucks back in the day or something. I'm not sure. Here's here's the cassette. Here's the actual cassette, just that you know, if you want to see what it looks like. And there was a little, a little manual like in the in the cassette inlay, basically. Then you open it up, and it has, um, well, yeah. So there's, it's for, it was fourteen ninety five because it's actually an order form here. You can see that, and and Dorid spelled wrong. Nim was fourteen ninety five, and you can also get other great games like Cubes, Life Two, and Snake Eggs. But Andorid Nim is the one that I have here. So 15 bucks this game cost. Not too bad. Hey, Lester, how you doing? One of my YouTube lives notifications never work. I don't know. Mine never work either. So, all right, what's this here? This is the, the cover thing only. So it won't be too exciting. But I like looking at the covers. Sea Load, the Audible Magazine, issue number nine, November 1978. Oh, cool. It's like a kaleidoscope. That's really cool, actually. Wow, that's, this is like, yeah, this is like a cool kaleidoscope thing. But we're looking at Sea Load Magazine now. That's this yellow tape here. November 1978 issue. I'm also glad you joined before the end, Lester. Ryan says, it's the same reason why Stu blinks. I joined the live and the love. <laughs> this is really cool. You know, I have a cousin who's like one of the premier collectors of kaleidoscopes in the world. And I didn't know there was such a thing, people that collect kaleidoscopes, but there is, apparently. And this guy has, like, some serious stuff. This is pretty cool, though. Computer kaleidoscopes, basically what it is. I, I sort of like looking at it. I don't, I don't, let's do let's let it do one more. Oh. Okay. <laughs> the copyright notice. That was pretty cool. Ryan says, dude, that game would cost $55 nowadays. Which one? The one that was $14, the Android Nim? Somehow I doubt it. Is it going to do just the same exact patterns? Yeah, it looks like it's, it looks like it's, it looks like it's not like a random thing. It looks like it just repeats the same patterns, I think. Is that what it's doing? Yeah, I think it's, it's repeating. It's pretty cool, though. All right, let's, let's load up the next one. I like that was, I like that a lot, actually. 
let's put in the next file, next tape. Yeah, pretty, I agree with you, Lester. Pretty kind of relaxing. I can sort of just stare at that, actually, for a while. But I want to, I want to get on here. Androids of Nim, $15.97. Is 50, really? It's $55 now? Right, $9.78, by the way. But yeah, wow. I didn't realize inflation was that much. So for... <laughs> but you know what? It was probably like just as hard to make that as it is to make like Call of Duty nowadays. <laughs> Not really. I'm sure Call of Duty it takes like a lot more people than that, but... Uh, yeah, that's interesting. I didn't realize it was that the inflation was that serious. 1978, though, not see it worse than 1979. <laughs> it's a pricey game, yeah. A good point. I didn't, I didn't think of it that way. But listen, there's all. That's all you got. All right, what do we got here? Run. Welcome to Melvin J. Gooba's World War Two and a Half. Is that what it said? Boo 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 boo. This is like my first program I wrote here. You're the artillery commander. Stop laughing, General Patton. Your rec recon plane is flying over the battlefield and marks on the area approximately 400 yards by 200 yards and circling the target. You having a huge ego say that is easy to hit. Then you find out in order to destroy the target, you have to hit within 100 yards of it. After picking up your stripes, you try to look at your artillery. Do you have the key to your artillery housing? What must I say to that? Yes? I'll say no. I guess the government can afford a new lock. The cat has a maximum range of 32,000 yards. The elevation of the barrel is at 45 degrees. Situated in the northwest corner of the battlefield. Artillery housing lets you point the barrel anywhere from due east, set at 1 degree, to due south at 89 degrees. You're pleasantly surprised you can adjust the elevation direction to the nearest hundredth of a degree that you may need to. What do you need? Good news or good whiskey? Good whiskey. This is an interesting game. You get good news. <laughs> For the recon play, you get a visual picture of the battlefield showing the target where your shots land. The onboard TRS-80 will also give you a listing of the... It sounds like worms rhyming. I don't know. It will also give you the direction and distance of the target your shot hit. Keep this under your hat. Just in case your shot leaves the battlefield, the TRS-80 will cover for you by placing the shot marker in the border of the battlefield and print off-field on the screen. The listing of the shots your yards your shot must probably be right. Want that whiskey now? Yes. You'll learn no drinking on duty. But how about something just as good? If you practice shots, are the innocent people of the battle area should warm your heart? I thought it would. Kind of a weird ass game. <laughs> this is pretty interesting. All right, what the hell? Ready for action? Those are my artil artillery? What's my supposed to do here? Ready for action? No. You're going to get it. Prime C load. Okay, those are the instructions. I said I put it in the next file to get the actual game. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, Ryan. We'll find out in a second what this is. That was definitely funny, though. Gamers Grotus is not surprising. I've seen some of the PS2 games that are going for over 2K. Wow, you serious? Oh my god. It's crazy. Since, I mean, I wonder if that's going to stay that way or if it's just like a, you know, a temporary, you know, spike. I think PS2 right now is like sort of the height of nostalgia. Lester says, if you look at the price of PCs in the 80s and 70s and today's money, you realize how lucky you're going to have them homes. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I was looking, I saw an ad for like Radio, the, the, the TRS-80 Model 4, and it was like, I don't know, three or four grand or something? It was pretty expensive, and that was in like $1980. Yeah, you look at TVs back then and that TVs now, it's crazy. Good point. Realistically, we never expect to get VR at homes. Now we do. Yeah, you're right. It's all technology advances. It's pretty crazy. So let's see what this game is. It looks like worms or, you know, artillery or whatever you whatever you want to call it. Um, scorched Earth or Gorillas.Bass or whatever. That's what it sounds like, but I don't, I don't know. We'll see. All right. Okay, so I'm the black... I'm the black dot in the, north, in the northwest here. See my mouse, and I guess I'm trying to hit this guy here. And it said zero is to the east, and E9 is is to the south. So okay, so like basically, zero. If I did zero, I guess I would hit here, and E9 would hit here. So I need to have something like, um, I don't know, eighty. Let's try that eighty. Elevation. Hmm. 
it said if you use 45, it goes like 75,000 yards or something like that. So I don't want that. I want something s smaller. Let me try like 20, but I'm completely guessing. Oh, wow. It was really close. I, you know, it said I'd like to be 100 yards with, to get, within to get it. Well, that's super close. All right, let's try that again. Let's try direction. Um, let's try uh, 79. Elevation 18. Man, I'm right on top of it. That doesn't count as a hit? That's a, that's a miss? <laughs> Come on. 79, elevation 17. <laughs> Give me a freaking break. Oh, it says you could use percent. You could use like uh, halves and stuff like that. All right, let's try it again. 79, 17.5. Thinking man's gorilla.bass. Hey, I got it. <laughs> oh, it's like a mushroom cloud. I like that. Thinking man's gorilla got bass. Our hero! Woohoo! Your fourth round hit within 68 yards. Stop dancing. They decide to notice you. Now you've done it. Who wrote this had a sense of humor? Any ammo left? Yeah, I'll try one more time. We'll do one more. Uh, direction. Direction. Uh, let's see. 40. Wait, 35. Ooh, whoops. I had a backspace and it killed it. Let's see if I can regret it again. Let's try a different one. All right. Uh, let's do direction 80, elevation 10. Pfft, look how close I am. Look, I should get points for that. I'm sorry. Uh, all right. Let's do direction 79. Elevation 10. Oh, that was even worse. I don't know how, but... Okay, let's do... 77. Elevation 10. Alright, let's try 77.9. I'm so close, like seriously... Dang it, he ain't running. How did I not get him? There we go. It's right on top of it. That's a miss? That's Wait, how is that a miss? How is that a miss? I was right on top of it. What the hell? Oh, it was 231 yards away. 231 yards south of it. In the picture, I'm like right on top of it. Uh, okay. That's fucked up. Excuse me. There we go. <laughs> that was like, I mean, like, come on. <laughs> Ryan says. This is even more replay to me than Bullseye. Get a different message. Stop dancing. That's enough. That, that was fun. Both of you got like, what? What? What happened? Yeah, I know. I was like, run out of here. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Any ammo left? No. And it's like, run for it. <laughs> That's pretty funny, actually. And Ryan said, this is a more replay to me than Androids of Nim. Yeah, it's, it's more of a, it's more, because you, every time it's a little bit different. I wonder if, if the Androids of Nim, I think that one, once you figure it out, you figured it out, basically. That was pretty cool. That was fun. All right, let's try the next the next one here. Let's see what the next one is. What'd you guys think of that game? It was not as good as Gorillas Dot Bass. I like seeing you know the thing fly or, or worms, you know, or like you know all the different bobs and whatnot. But it was it was not bad. It was okay. <laughs> you guys didn't recover from the what yet? Right? Says I like that. Yeah, that was pretty good. And by I'm drinking Coke today because I ran out of Pepsi, unfortunately. Actually, somebody bought me some Coke. My wife bought me some Coke, or Diet Coke, rather. 
So I drink what I have in the house. That was pretty cool. Let's. I hope the next one is just as good. So so far, we had the title. We had the loading screen. You know, the C load with the kaleidoscopes, which is which was good. And then we had uh, this 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 ammo game, which I thought was pretty cool too. We got three more files on this tape, so hopefully they're all just as good. <sighs> what else are you guys doing today, aside from uh, watching me and uh, probably sleeping? Right, some surprise you go back and forth with most of your Coke or Pepsi. Yeah, I mean, they both taste different. I just like like both of them. When I said this doesn't look like a game, we'll see in a second. In early 1800s, George Simon Ohm discovered Ohm's Law. Understanding Ohm's Law is a prerequisite to copyrighting basic electronics. So therefore, imperative they would do electronics working knowledge of Ohm's Law. Things you need to know before learning Ohm's Law. An amp is a measure of current. Voltage is a measure of electrical pressure. Okay, an op is a measure of resist. Op is a measure of resistance. And to continue, an op law. Okay, this is like a this is like a, learn, a teaching thing. I think. I is current. E is voltage. R is resistance. Uh, e equals I divide. I, I learned this one time in physics or something, but I'm not doing math problems like this. Oh, nice picture there. This symbol stands for a resistor. A schematic diagram. An amp meter. A battery. This is sort of cool, but I'm not. I'm not doing it. I mean, I'm not doing. I'm not just doing some pure math problems. Uh, yeah, e equals i times r. All right, very cool. More problems. Let's just exit. Quit. All right. So that was that was that wasn't a game. Let's put the next one in. I mean, that's sort of cool. I think you get some good value for your money there if you get this this program and you want to learn Ohm's law. If you get this tape rather, but. Uh, Ryan says, hanging out, don't get our second microchip. I assume you mean by that our second vaccine shot? And if so, which which one was it? I guess probably had to be Pfizer. And uh, how's she doing? My daughter's a little bit under the weather, my, well, my, my older one. Um, she got Pfizer. Early edutainment, Ryan says. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure that's even edutainment. It's, it's so... It's so basic, it's like, there's not much tainment. <laughs> it's mostly edu. <laughs> It's like edgy without tainment. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. That's not. That's not my cup of tea exactly. I'm, let's let's see what the next one is. I think the next one's gonna be better. Yeah, I think she. I think I guess. I guess you have to get Pfizer. I think the Moderna is only for eighteen and up. I believe. All right, let's see what this one is. Let's play cat and mouse. Okay. Whoopee. <laughs> this, this is sort of funny. It's like. It's like it's like making fun of itself. Instructions, yes. The setting, they're in my garage, and if you know anything about the average garage, you realize the cat and the mouse have trouble moving around. Both creatures move one space each turn, but they are both limited in their movements by the garbage in their paths. Also, my garbage is very unstable. Southern California earthquake area, so the garage shifts each turn. Would you like to live in my garage? No. Anyway, there's nowhere to lie down. In order for the animals to move, the paths must be open. To demonstrate, I'll use my cat. He's in the center of this garage. No, no possible moves. If a symbol is in one of the locations shown below, he may move in that direction. What? If a symbol is in one of the locations shown below, what do you mean a symbol? What the hell does that even mean? Like a plus? A plus symbol? I don't know. Would you like to teleport out of here? No. So with the cat, I said no, but he can only teleport inside the garage to garbage piles unknown. The object the cat wants the mouse, obviously, and the mouse wants the safety of his hole located in the center of the garage. But he has a mouse hole in the center of your garage? To begin the internal rivalry, press enter. Okay, what are you guys saying in the meantime? Uh, talking about, you're talking about uh, the vaccines. I press... What the hell is this? So I'm the cat. So I want to get to the mouse. Can I go down, or is that one blocking me? I'm not sure. I guess I could go down. What is that? Can take take your turn? It's a two-player game. Yeah, Lester, I'm also confused by the instructions. It looks like it's a two-player game. Like the cat, and the mouse. I guess the mouse would probably teleport. 
The mouse went all the way to the corner there. Basically, it's a it's a weird chasing game, but it's it's two players. I mean, which is pointless right now because there's no, I'm not doing a two player game, and I don't know what this like. Obviously, like a lot of this stuff is supposed to be garbage in this guy's garage, but like it's so weirdly drawn. Why don't you just make it a maze? And actually, I play. If you guys want to look, I once streamed Cat and Mouse on the Odyssey, the Magnavox Odyssey, with my wife, and I think that that was really really primitive. And, like, pretty bad. But I think that was better than this, <laughs> by the way. So, I'm not playing this anymore. This is not not a good game. I'm just going to quit. And we'll load the last one. Hopefully the last one we got we got another winner. Let's see load. Yeah, I think that was a weird one. And I think, it's funny, we had 10, we had 10 concurrent people, like, about when I started this game. And I think now we have, like, 6 or 7, so... Three people looked at this game and just were like, I'm out. That's it. I'm done with this stream. I'm going to walk my cat or my or my mouse and, and not watch this anymore. <laughs> Hopefully the last one will be better. I think it will be. We'll see in a minute. <sighs> I got so much stuff here that I want to play. Yeah, Stream Killer. I just got this in the mail today. I want to do this at some point. Um, Seawolf 2 and Gunfight for Atari cassette ported by Epics from the Bally Midway Classics. I want to play that. And I got this other TRC game here, which I'm going to do at some point, Attack Force. That's another uh, Big Five software. Got lots of stuff, but it can only do one thing at a time, unfortunately. Master's like, Seawolf 2, yes! Yeah, I'm going to do that. Only one thing at a time, like I said. I like to try the, all these things. There's really cool stuff here. I wouldn't play these sea load things if it was just a complete waste of time, but like a lot of them are actually quite good. And I think as they go further on, they get more and more advanced. There's a lot of text adventures on there and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I got I got a lot of a lot of stuff I have to put away right now. I actually got uh, this this in the mail today too. MSX Game Reader. Which lets you connect an MSX cartridge to your to your PC. Um, it took it like I don't know two months to arrive from Japan. All right, let's see what this is. Run. Would you like instructions? Yes. This game is similar to Hangman, except that the poor fellow gets crushed for your mistakes. Okay. When you begin, a series of white spaces will appear in the upper left corner. Each one appears represents a letter of the word to be guessed. Enter your guesses and pay the consequences. All right. That's fine. Um, enter number two easy. What easy and five hard? Let's choose five hard. <laughs> That's sort of funny. All right, let's pick A. No, A's not there. E, E's not there. I. <laughs> Good luck, pal. I guess this is hard. Oh, there was an O. U. There's a U. Uh, what could this word be? This is sort of, I like this. It looks like he's in jail right now, except I think he's about to get good squashed. We don't get a lot of turns uh, with it. All right, let's try, uh, R. Nope. Oh, there's an R. Uh, let's try S. He's dead. Wow, I only get four turns. It's not a lot of turns. I guess that is hard. That's what makes it hard is... <laughs> Do you like to see the answer? No, I just didn't get enough chances to guess it. I don't really care for the answer. Hey, bring me Joy-Con. How you doing? G-H-N. All right, next time. Guess the letter A. I mean, listen, it's impossible to play Hangman with only four guesses. I'm sorry. Unless you just get super lucky. And I'm not getting super lucky. Uh, I should depict the hard mode. Uh, and let's try this time. There it was an N. Uh, what could this be? Maybe try and get an easier level. Yeah, I could do that, but I'm, I mean, if I, I'm, let's try it right over here right now. Uh,. What the heck could this be? 
I don't know. Any, any, any idea what to guess here? R, S, I'll guess L, resign. <laughs> oh, hey, L. No, it was no L. Good luck, pal. Uh, resign. Oh, maybe it's resign. Oh, I see what you're saying. I th <laughs> you were, I thought you were, I thought you were trolling me. All right, let's just ask. R. Oh, man, it was so close. I should have guessed benign, maybe, or no. Let's, this time I do want to see what it is. Yes. Design. All right, there was, there was no way to guess that. It's impossible. All right, let's let's escape this. Let's do it again with the with the easier difficulty. Let's press three this time. That's. I thought the words would just be harder. I didn't think they just give you less guesses. Yeah, last year it was very close. See, now he has more space. Wow. It's a hard one here. It's only one vowel of the whole damn thing. You're both wrong. Yeah, you're both, but you're close. Uh, what, what could this be? Uh, I'm just guessing. It's not crib. It's not fright. It's, so bring? No, it can't be bring. It has a T at the end. I guess you didn't see that yet. Uh, <laughs> too short. Yeah. Uh. Uh, I've totally, I've totally like fragging up here. Print, that's good. Print, I like that. It's wrong though, <laughs> but it was good. What could that letter be before the T? A C maybe? I'm gonna guess C. Nope, it was wrong. Trist. Oh, it can't be Trist because it's O T. More people are leaving the street and they don't like Hangman, but that's okay. I like it. I want to win one time. Yeah, so I want to see the answer. Wrist. Oh, man. Uh, okay, one more time. Guess the letter. E. Got an E. A. No A. I. Okay. S. I'm going to actually get one. Uh, L. No. T. No. <laughs> uh. N. Oh, I'm not doing too well here. Anybody have any ideas? I said N. R maybe? No R. Oh my god. T I already guessed. What a hard this is a really hard game. I don't know. D? Alright, I'll say D for Lester. Good job, Lester. <laughs> I want to get one time. This is like uh, the trash compactor in Star Wars. Beast? Come on. Who's going to guess that? A. E. All right. So far, so good. O. I. U. Y. S. I feel like this guy purposely made all sorts of hard words, like on purpose. 
Okay, I got the first letter for the first time ever. Uh... Uh, lethar lethargy. Yay! <laughs> Finally got one. I didn't get anything for that though. I don't get any like. Which maybe it's like it's best out of five. Maybe if I get like through the next two right, I'll also get I'll get some kind of prize. I'll try. I'll see if I get one more. Ooh, ooh, first letter here. Okay. Uh, okay, this B. Entity? It can't be entity. Could sensibly the potential side effect of COVID vaccine all ties in. Uh, it could be entropy. Entro no, it can't be. It's, too, not, it's not long enough. Entro. Can't, there's no T either. Uh, there has to be some other vowel here. Either an O or a U. Let's guess uh, an O, please. Ooh. What the hell is this? Anybody know what this is? Is it an English word? That's an O? Uh. Oh, embryo. All right, let's see if I can get the next one. The best out of five. <laughs> no. No. Oh, my God. I'm already in bad shape here. Seriously? Thank you, Lester. I appreciate that. I'm not in good shape, though, here. I, this is this is like a very bad, bad uh, turnout. I basically have two more wrong guesses that he's he's dead. Okay, there's no other vowels. What could this be? Um... What could this possibly be? What ends with a Y? There's no other vowels. But there hasn't been one game yet where there's been a duplicate letter. Every time it's only one letter, and each every single letter is, is different. Uh, glossy. That's interesting. Let's try S. Well, it's not glossy, but that was a good guess. Glossy, I like that. What could it be? What What is the answer? We gotta get this. Yeah, they definitely. <laughs> Lester, they, they for sure did this on purpose. Uh. What could be there? What letter could possibly be there? Dropsy, dropsy, maybe. No, that's not right. Drowsy. Yes! Woohoo! <laughs> that was so lucky. <laughs> all right, so we didn't, get, we didn't get anything for that. It was a best of five, but that's it. So, yeah, all right, whatever. The heck with you. I won. I won. You can't take that away. <laughs> all right. That was fun. <laughs> let's, let's, let's play Android Nib one more time. And then probably that'll be it for today. Look at that go one more time.
Let's try to load it up here. Yeah, that was you know what? Sometimes the simplest games are the most fun. Isn't that, isn't that definitely true? Like that the Hangman thing. Like it was it was just a stupid game, but it was it was a cool you know animation sort of the guy getting crushed. But at the end of the day, it's just Hangman. But it was still fun. It was like a battle of the, the battle of the minds because they they obviously picked words that were were hard. And the only reason I thought of Dropsy, by the way, is because there's a game called Dropsy that with that clown. I don't know if you guys have seen that. It's like an indie game that came out a few years ago. So I was going for Dropsy, and that was wrong. But luckily, it was Drowsy. <laughs> if I would if I would have picked the uh, the P first, I would have been totally confused. So it's good I went for the D and the R first. Oh man, that was crazy. All right, we'll do this one more time with. Uh, Android Nim, which I got here, just to show it off again, and then that'll probably be the end for today. For tomorrow, Dropsy is an old-time medical term. Yeah, I mean, it was the, the game with the clown, is, it's a clown cold, his name is, I think his name is Dropsy, but he's supposed to have Dropsy in the game or something like that. I haven't played it. It's like, I, I don't know, I don't know, what, I don't know what the actual medical condition is, but like, in the game, this clown is like, apparently he doesn't talk. He just goes around hugging people, and he's very heavy set. And I don't know what what is if what his medical condition is, but I'm not sure. Lester says, "Yeah, I got it," and then you shoot it to you got it. We we both got it. This is like a team effort. <laughs> um, tomorrow I'm probably going to stream um, this game called Down in Bermuda, which is the sequel to um, Agent A that I streamed a while back. That was like an indie adventure game that everyone sort of liked. So it's on Steam. It's like twenty bucks, but it was on sale for like I think five bucks the last few this past few days or six bucks. So I bought it, and hopefully it'll be good. Ah, we just called a demon now. Oh, interesting. That makes sense. So that's that's why probably he's like he's like heavy set like that in the game, because he has some kind of edema or dropsy. I guess that makes sense, Ryan. That's helpful. Yeah, so we just, for folks who are joining now, we just finished uh, doing the November 1978 Sea Load Magazine. Art Artillery was a fun game. Cat and Mouse was terrible. And uh, what was the other one? The other one was Crush Man, which we just played instead of Hangman. I think that was, that was fun, too, from my perspective. It wasn't, like, uh, the most advanced game ever made, but it was basically Hangman. <laughs> Excuse me. So, uh, who's still, who's here? Say hi in the chat. I know Lester's here, Ryan's here, I assume Gamers Grotto is still around. Um, we got a bunch of other people here. Say, come in the chat, say hello, and uh, tell me what you're doing. Tell me why you're up this time of day or night, where you're, where you're, where you're, where you're connecting from. I'm in, I'm in the east coast of the United States, in New Jersey, so right here it's 12, 18 a.m., just after midnight. But I know, like, in other places in the world, it could be the morning or it could be earlier in the evening. So uh, let me know where you are. And by the way, if you're if you're not subscribed to the channel, whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching the replay, please go ahead and subscribe and hit like as well so more people can see this video. I think there's not a lot of people streaming TRS-80 games. I would guess probably I'm the only one. I could be wrong, but I'd be very surprised if there's anybody else doing live streams of TRS-80 games. So uh, if, you, if you think this is cool, please do hit like on the video, and please subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And if you're watching this after the fact, make sure you leave a comment and let me know what you think of it. Ryan says, the Hangman was great. Crush Man took a thousand programmers, like just like Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> I doubt it. And Gamers Ground says, I'm here, I never leave. After the stream ends, I mop the YouTube floors. All right, let's do this again. Lester started heading out grocery shop in Malaysia at 12 p.m., suiting up. We'll check out the other game as a mystery play. Okay, cool, Lester. Well, good to see you, man. I'm glad you could stop by. Uh, first move by me. It's, so it's the same thing. So I think basically, if it's the same thing every time, which it looks like it is, not even randomized, then once you could beat it once, you could beat it every time. And basically, the way I did it last time was I just. I just killed all the guys in the third row to start off, and that just makes it easier of like a problem to deal with. And then I think after that it was like I, I had no chance, no no way to lose basically. I think so. We'll do it one more time, but uh, I like all the animations. I like the the head nodding and stuff like that. Like I said, I think this was 
This was Leo Christofferson's first game. Lester says overall pretty fun set of games. Yeah, thanks, Lester. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, so this is Leo Christofferson's first game, I believe, made in 1978, and he did a whole bunch after that, like three, I don't know, five or six other games, and they were all pretty cool. So they all have this cool animation. This Android style uses a bunch of times. Oh, he just like different this time. Oh, two, two, one. Interesting. Now I'm not sure what to do. Chris Christofferson. No, his name is Leo Christofferson. And it's Christofferson with a C. Alright, so... I don't know what I'm supposed to do here now, but I guess I'm going to... I guess I'm going to just do what he did. I'm just guessing here. Let's see. Uh... Hmm. What should I do? I'm going to do the same thing he did because I don't really know what to do. I like the music. Not the music. The sound effects are cool. And the way they, you know, they have all the, the animations and stuff. The actual game, obviously, the underlying game is very simple. And if I was... If I knew how to play Nim, if I was more of a math person, or if I remembered, like, from high school, that I could, it would be a challenge at all. Because I just don't remember the algorithm, I'm just guessing, but theoretically it shouldn't be hard. What's he going to do now? 1-4. Oh, he surprised me. Uh oh I think I blew it. I think I definitely blew it. <laughs> I should have paid more attention to the first game. Uh oh. Oh no. I know I can tell already when it's in this configuration that it basically I lost because there's two two piles that are exactly the same and whatever whatever I do he can just mimic. So I, I I made a mistake. I should have... Uh, now, I, now I know what I, should, what I did wrong, but it's already too late to fix it. So, um... Yeah, it's my turn. I'm going to lose. All right, well, it's fine. I'll lose. Uh, let's just let's make it quick. I can resign, too. I had R to resign. Right? I just resigned. Should you give it up? <laughs> this, this computer is like a sore winner and a sore loser, apparently. Ah, you win. Very nice. Right, let's try one more time. This time I'll try not to lose. Try the same, same, same strategy as before to start with. You know, Ryan said if I do one, but I think he, he was gonna, he was just gonna copy whatever I did. He would get the last licks, basically. The, the goal is to get is to be the last person to to eliminate a robot. I don't know why he doesn't. I think he's just playing till he's not playing very hard because actually that what I just did doesn't even make any sense. He should just he should just kill two from the top row now, and then he wins. He's like he's like like sort of playing easy on me. I think. Or maybe it's better as he goes along. Now that I think about it, what I did what I did was wrong. And this time he actually did that. So I'm I can't win like this actually. I made a mistake. I gotta think of a better strategy for this game. Once there's two rows of this of everything the same, it's done. Hmm. Is there a limit to your shots? No. You can wipe out the whole you can wipe out the whole row, but you can only do one row at a time. You can shoot all of one line, you can, correct. But he could also shoot all of one line. So once there's two lines left with equal number of people, like, I, I lost automatically. So let me try it again. I'll try something different this time.
Seven, five, and three. One on the bottom, you think? I was thinking you'd do one on the top. One on the bottom is not a terrible idea either. Let's try one on the bottom. So the animation is cool, but also makes it take a really long time to actually uh, do it. And it's not even on the top and middle and even on the bottom. Is that is that a good thing or a bad thing though? Let's see what he does. Two four. Interesting. I think that was I think that was a mistake. So now if I take off the water from the bottom, he's just gonna no matter what I do, he's he's a better he's in better shape than me, I think. Yeah, that's not something I could do here. I think I, I think I, I gotta I gotta think of a better strategy. You said six on top. If I would have done six on top, he would just shot the f entire bottom row, and then he would have won. That's why I didn't do that. But I'm not sure this is gonna work either. It's probably not. We'll see. What does he do? Yeah, if, if he's last, he wins, Ryan. The idea is for me to be last. All right, I think I won now. I'm not sure if the computer plays like to the best of its ability or if it intentionally makes mistakes, but this should be a victory for me now because now I just have to blow out the last line. You know, you want to shoot last, Ryan. Now I should win. So yeah, the animation is cool, but it makes it take a long time. That's the only downside of it. I just almost wish like he would just you know, would be dead. It's supposed to be out to wait. I wonder if the if the computer thinks while it's doing that or something. I think the computer realizes he lost now. I don't think it matters what he does. One four. <laughs> Shaky said no, you can't do that computer. Three one. It's interesting, he changed his move. He did it first an illegal move. Wow. That's so weird that he did an illegal move. Is he just doing random sh random stuff? <laughs> Alright, now just do one one. Computer's freak. <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's a little weird. Why is this guy talking to him? Like, rah, 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 rah. <sighs> I mean, I guess the summary of this is it's it's a pretty basic game. But the presentation is nice, and the presentation makes it, like, a lot better than some of the other games that came out in 1978. Although, again, this thing also came out in 1978, and, you know, I think for a lot cheaper price, you got, basically, all those games that I showed before, including that Hangman game. I feel like the overall fun value of this cassette is probably a little bit greater than the overall fun value of this cassette. So, like, the... The magazine subscription ended up being better than the actual retail game in a sense. Although, like I said, this game was the first game I think by this guy. He ends up going on to create a whole bunch of other cool stuff. So, it's it's definitely historically significant and nothing else. And let's see if I get the same text this time and I win. Okay, come on. You're definitely losing here. 
It's such a these androids just go go to their death without complaining. Okay. There's some elephantine. So it's different different adjectives. Odd, low, barbaric, unbelievable, gross. Still talking. Deplorable. Oh, deplorable. Stroke of fate. <laughs> you win. How come when he wins, it's like, I win, and when you win, it's like, screw you, you win. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I think that's it for today. It's been an hour. We got to play this. We got to play some of this, some of that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know we people dropped off towards the end, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Oh, I said no, and they talked again one more time. Ryan and Jeremy and Lester and other folks, thanks for being here. Again, please leave comments. Please like. Please subscribe. Please share. And we'll do more TRS-80 streams soon. Thank you, Gamers Grottos, and good games. Tomorrow we're doing probably a more modern adventure, like I said, or a puzzle game at least. I think some kind of puzzle game. And then we'll be back with something else later in the week. So thanks, everybody, and take care. Enjoy.